make sure you've got the correct printer. In this case, it's under settings. We're going to use the GD1. And you should only have to select that once. Uh, if you're using the same computer, then it's going to remain the same. So we're going to import the file. Even though it says open, we're actually importing a file. And you can see right away it's it's red. So as I mentioned earlier, we would we want to make sure we're printing with the left extruder. So make sure you hit the model and then select left. And it should be yellow. Just get used to looking at that yellow. And do it up here right away as well. So yellow, yellow, everything's all yellow. We're good. And you can go ahead and, you know, move things around. You can scale them, although I recommend scaling everything in your modeling software first so that you can get consistent results. And then I try to align everything up with the uh, platform, the build, the build platform or the bed, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, the heat's not as good at the edges, so if you print it the way it was, it might be cooler where that print gets close to the edges. So spin it around this way, it's going to have more even heat. Okay, let's take a look over here, left extruder. We're not going to mess around with too much um, other than the standard settings, whatever we had in here last time. So extruder, nothing to, to mess with. Layer, um, just I'd say about four, four layers. In case you have to sand it, in case some layers curl. You do, more, you do any less than that, you might get holes in your prints especially if you're going to be sanding things down. Infill, something like this, I would start around 30%. Um, it really, the infill it is going to really depend on how you orient this, orient this thing. And um, the supports, and the, the infill is going to depend on, yeah, like how, how what kind of, uh, Angle, so let's just go look at this, what I'm talking about. So let's take this and rotate it. So right now, I'm talking about the layer orientation, and it goes side to side, left to right. So it's going this way. So that means it's at its weakest in this orientation. So if you're going to put force on it that's going to stress those layers, you want to consider that in your design. Now this is going to be a hook, right? Something you're going to pull on. So it's going to have... Uh, strain put on it, let's say, in this hor horizontal direction. So if we printed this, let's say, like this, for instance, and we printed it in this orientation, this is going to probably break either here or more likely it's going to snap right here because most of the strain on this hook is going to be put right down in this corner. And the weakest point are these horizontal layers. So if there's a joint it's horizontal right at the weakest point, it's probably going to snap right here. It could, you know, this could be a weak point as well, but since the layer goes, you know, all the way through here, it, it's not as likely to break right here because it's got force going down. This has got that same thing happening, but above that line and all the force is going down on it. So I would not recommend printing it like this. Plus the supports on this are going to be just ridiculous. It's going to have to have supports all the way here, through here, all the way up to the top, and even supports in here. You have to Again, you have to think about if this is printing out here and it's sticking out over here, well, it has to have something directly underneath it, so it'll have to have supports on there. Okay, let's try another orientation. Okay, very similar. If we do this orientation, again, you're going to need a lot of supports, more than when we first brought it in here. Here, under here, all under here, throughout here, and even in here. It's going to be really messy. Uh, it require a lot of cleanup. And it's getting it's weakest at its horizontal layers. So if we hang this, and this is hanging on a pole, or your finger goes in there or something, it could snap through these layers. So it's not very strong here. It's definitely not strong here, and it's definitely not strong here. So again, I'm guessing it's going to snap here, but instead this way, it's probably going to snap this way because of those layers. So I really think that the best way to do it is to kind of leave it how it was. It's still a little bit of a nightmare to print with all those support materials, but the layers are going through this way. So that means this entire hook from top to bottom 
is another hook laid on top of another hook laid on top of another hook and so there's not really a lot of strain being put at these horizontal layers it's all uh, again being put here but the layers go through this way so it's a lot stronger it's going to be probably be pretty ugly of a print on the bottom here so the bottom half is probably going to be a little ugly and let me show you why. So let's go to layers. If we go to this different view for layers, it'll actually show us uh, what these layers look like. It'll slow your computer down and it's going to take a little bit here. Uh, let's go ahead and prepare. Take a little bit. There we go. And so it's going to show you, you can see uh, left extruder, there should be nothing in yellow. I'm sorry, uh, that's the right extruder. Let's see. Here you can see though the right extruder is not checked. So we don't see anything there. Don't get confused by the colors. This is all going to be red. Okay. And here's the support material you can see underneath here. There's a little bit of a gap there. And it's just supporting it a little bit so that as it prints through here it's got some extra material. Because this is not touching the bed. Because this tube here is centered on here which leaves a little bit of a gap and then under here remember I, I mentioned earlier that right about here we're probably going to need support so right up until this point but still we might get if these layers are horizontal you can see they're kind of sitting on top of each other like steps they're little stairs that are stacked over here so if the if this angle gets too extreme and it's not supported then one of these layers could start to curl up. And when that layer curls, the next layer on top of it has to overcome that extra material and you end up with a like a burnt up like kind of like a uh like a big gap on the bottom. So it almost looks like it somebody gouged it with a knife and a lot of times it can be burned because it's dragging on the nozzle. So it gets for a really ugly surface. Even if you can sand it, it can sometimes still be a really ugly surface. Uh, and there's the brim. You know, it's going, I don't know, several, you know, what does it look like 10 or 12 uh, passes before it reaches the model and the support material. And you can take this down here and then you can go, there's your infill. You can see the difference in infill. If I chose the line or grid or something like that, it would be quite a different infill. These are like inverted triangles on top of triangles next to inverted triangles. And it just makes for a pretty strong print, but it also gives it a pretty big, pretty big openings. And then there's your uh, initial support material and brim. And in this case, your first layer. So go ahead and play around with that. Let's you know bring that back up. I'm going to look back at the, the solid layer. I just prefer that look. It's not as strain, you know, strenuous in my eyes. And so that's infill. And so that's what I would suggest for here. You know, it's maybe around 30% to start with. And I think you're, it's going to be grid or line as your default. Give that a try. I like this octet in certain, uh, certain places, but maybe not in this case. You know, still put your brim on. Make sure this your brim is printing with your left extruder, so make sure that's yellow. You do make it a little complicated, but you're also in quote-unquote expert mode at this point. Speed, as I mentioned, I do about 40. More complicated shapes, I'll slow down even longer. Sometimes I'll just slow the printer itself down. Temperature, I mentioned earlier, you're going to start around two, you know, 203, 205, 207, and take it up or down from there, depending on how the print is going. Then cooling, always yes. Support material, we discussed extensively. I'm not going to go into that much more. The 45 is that angle there. And again, you can kind of hover over that and read what it says. Depending on your software, some consider zero the vertical and some consider zero the horizontal. So you just have to know what they're referencing, what that support angle is relative to. Is it relative to a, your platform or perpendicular to that? They can choose your support material. Sometimes... I rarely do grid because that gets really messy, but I do change a little bit. Mostly I go with lines. And then if if the uh, model needs more lines or less, you can change that density. And then you can also change the orientation you know, of your model so that it, it uh, sometimes that'll make a difference as well. 
And then your Z support distance, this is gonna make a big deal. You should be able to go with the default, but if you're finding that your support material is like stuck, like glued to the surface, then you're gonna change this Z support distance. So remember, go to expert mode. And what are we talking about? We're talking about the supports. So let's go over here, go to supports. And you can enable that Z support distance uh, right here. So if I click that on or click that off, you'll notice on the right hand side that'll pop on or off. So if I want to, uh, if I mess with this, this number, those supports are either going to get closer to my model or further away from my model. So you want to have a distance that's not too close that they're sticking and not so far away that this uh, bottom layer on top of the supports, you, you don't want that to sag on top of your supports and create a really messy surface. You wanna have it really close, but not too close. And for the Cheaty software, the default, the point two seems to work pretty good. And you can hover over that and read uh, the details on what that exactly means if you wanna get a better understanding of that. And again, remember, yours might not look like this. Mine looks like this because I've gone in expert mode and turned on all these different settings. And nothing to really worry about in advanced. So we've already sliced it. We haven't made any changes. If we've made other changes, this would, you know, we, this would say prepare again, but it says uh, save removable drive. So I'm going to save that. It's going to save it as the same name as the uh, file that you imported. So if you look, it says mask, and that was the name of the STL I imported. So if you want to change that, you would have to save it to your desktop and then drag it onto your uh, SD card, which sometimes you might have to do. And just remember, don't have really long names, not a lot of spaces and periods, and uh, just have some fun and go out and make.